big diplomatic win for India amidst an election in which national security remains the biggest issue. Delhi gets Jaish e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar listed as a global terrorist in the United Nations, and China is on board. Election Commission cancels the nomination of SP BSP candidate Tej Bahadur Yadav, citing discrepancies in the nomination process. The Samajwadi Party cries foul. The Prime Minister campaigns in Ayodhya, takes on the Samajwadi Party and the BSP, compares India's security situation before 2014 to the current Sri Lankan crisis. The PM's strongest and most dramatic charge against the Congress yet says the party hates him so much they're dreaming of killing him. Calls the Congress a supporter of extremist preacher Zakir Naik. The fight amongst opposition leaders continues. Congress President Rahul Gandhi attacks BSP and SP, saying they are remote controlled by the BJP. And senior Congress leader and candidate for the New Delhi Assem uh, Lok Sabha seat, Ajay Markan, says that full statehood for New Delhi, for Delhi, will be a disaster. It will bring the state of law and order down to the level of UP or Bihar. Hello and welcome to an all new episode of India Election Watch. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay and this is a show that brings you the very latest on the world's biggest election. Verified updates, unbiased analysis, the entire election day wrapped in 30 minutes for you. Let's begin with the day's highlights. We are halfway through the 2019 general election. Four phases of voting are done. The focus is now shifted to North India. All parties are aggressively campaigning in the Hindi heartland. Here's a rally roster for the day. Prime Minister Modi was in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Together, these states elect 109 MPs to the Lok Sabha. BJP President Amit Shah did four rallies in West Bengal. This is a critical state for his party. They hope to make substantial gains here. 42 seats up for grabs in West Bengal. Rahul Gandhi crossed paths with the Prime Minister today. He was also campaigning in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Let's begin with the PM's campaign. His first stop was Ambedkar Nagar in Uttar Pradesh, just 25 kilometers away from Mayodhya. He did not talk about the Ram Mandir, though. He continued his relentless attacks on the opposition. He targeted the SPBSP alliance for using B.R. Ambedkar and Ram Manohar Lohia for political gains. And then he spoke about terrorism. Our friends, एक कमजोर सरकार के इंतजार में है ये बात इसलिए भी अहम है क्योंकि सपा हो बसपा हो कांग्रेस हो कोई भी महामिलावटी हो ये आतंक पर नरमी का इनका पुराना रिकॉर्ड रहा है National security is at the center of the BJP campaign. The issue of terrorism has dominated the national discourse since the terror attack in Pulwama. The opposition has accused the Prime Minister of opportunism. And he has warned the people of India against choosing what he calls a weak government. हमने देखा है श्रीलंका में क्या हुआ कुछ यही स्थिति 2014 से पहले भारत में भी थी अयोध्या में फैजाबाद में कैसे कैसे बम धमाके हुए क्या हम इसे भूल सकते हैं क्या वो दिन हम कैसे भूल सकते हैं जब देश में आए दिन कहीं न कहीं आतंकी हमला होता था। He did not stop there. In Madhya Pradesh, the Prime Minister accused the Congress of shielding controversial preacher Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik's channel has been banned in Sri Lanka after the Easter bombings. 
The Prime Minister raised this matter. He said that while in power, the Congress protected this man who spreads extremism. He referred to an incident where senior Congress leader Digvijay Singh had shared the stage with Zakir Naik. This man has been charged with propagating terrorism by the National Investigation Agency. It is also believed that the Sri Lankan bombers could have been radicalized after listening to his speeches. Jis Zakir Naik ke shabda Sri Lanka mein bam dhamake karwate hain Sri Lanka ko uski TV channel ban karni padti hain us Zakir Naik ko Hindustan mein dikhi raja jaise log kande par bitha kar ke nach rahe hain bhaiyo doob maro doob maro Congress baalo on the other side, Rahul Gandhi has opened up a new front, this time against the SPBSP alliance. It seems like friends truly have turned into foes in Uttar Pradesh. Rahul Gandhi said Narendra Modi has the remote control of this Mahagad Bandhan. <laughs> Joining the Congress president was his sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. She was campaigning in Raibareli today for her mother Sonia Gandhi. समस्याओं की और विचारधाराओं की लड़ाई है ये जो जनता की समस्याएं हैं उनके लिए हम लड़ रहे हैं और अपनी विचारधारा के लिए ये प्रधानमंत्री कौन बनेगा कौन नहीं बनेगा ये उलझन प्रधानमंत्री जी को है दूसरों को नहीं है Verbal attacks aside are the struggles of the grand old party unraveling it There's already talk of post poll alliances starting with Andhra Pradesh and Telangana the Congress has sought the support of the TRS the local Congress unit has written a letter to K Chandrasekhar Rao they want the TRS to support Rahul Gandhi's bid for prime ministership. They're offering a deal, the local Congress unit of Telangana. If the TRS supports them, they say, they will grant special category status to Telangana. Now, this has been a long-standing demand of KCR. Why is the Congress then making these overtures now in the middle of an election? Because it is amply clear that regional parties will sweep these two states, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, and the prize is big. These two states together send 42 MPs to the Lok Sabha. KCR remains the king of his state, Telangana. Last day he dissolved the state assembly, he held an early election and he won it with a landslide. This time too, he has the momentum. And this reduces the national parties to being marginal players here. Both the Congress and the BJP want this chunk of the pie. 42 seats is a big number. Both may end up exploring alliances with regional players. The BJP is looking to the south to make up for its losses in the north. The Congress wants to lead a coalition with regional parties playing second fiddle. So they've made the first move. Also reaching out to N. Chandrababu Naidu. He left the NDA just before the election. He remains a contender, at least in Andhra Pradesh. Though Jagan Reddy is the favourite, the strong favourite in the state, the Congress is reaching out to all of them, leaving nothing to chance. Know your candidate. Today we are looking at sitting MP and Union Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal of the BJP. He's 65 years old. He represents the Bikaner constituency in Rajasthan. He has won two terms consecutively starting in 2009. Arjun Ram Meghwal studied law and arts. He worked as a bureaucrat in the Rajasthan state government. He was then promoted to the Indian Administrative Service. He rose to the rank of district collector and magistrate before taking voluntary retirement from the service to join the BJP. In his stint as an MP, Meghwal won the Best Parliamentarian Award in 2013. In the Modi government, he served as Union Minister of State in the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation as well as Parliamentary Affairs. 
For a brief period between 2016 and 2017, he was also the junior finance minister of India. It's not just in the government. Meghwal also held prominent positions in his party. He was the chief whip of the BJP in the Lok Sabha. He was nominated for the House Committee. Suffice to say, he was a significant member of the 16th Lok Sabha. So how did he perform in this term? We have data from June 2014 to July 2016, after which uh, Arjuna Meghwal uh, became a minister and his record looks exemplary. Let's take a look at what the figures say. The attendance, 98%, much higher than that of the national average. He participated in 92 debates, almost thrice the national average. Arjun Ram Meghwal raised 336 questions as a member. That's again thrice the national average. And he moved 16 private member bills from broad national issues like food safety and manual scavenging to local issues concerning his constituency. He has taken all of them up in parliament. He also used more than 19 of the 25 crore rupees allotted to him for developing his constituency. He eyeing a hat-trick in Bikaner. And Meghwal remains a strong favourite. He is facing Madan Gopal Meghwal of the Congress and CPI comrade Shopat Ram. But the road to Delhi will be bumpier this time. This is not 2014. Meghwal faces both anti-incumbency and infighting in his party. Bikaner votes in the fifth phase on the 6th of May. On Did You Know segment today, we are telling you about long-timers in the Lok Sabha. The men and women who have been MPs for the highest number of terms. And the figures are astounding. Top of the list is a man called Indrajit Gupta. He was a leader of the Communist Party of India. And Gupta was elected to the second Lok Sabha in a bipole, the second Lok Sabha of India. He continued to be an MP for a record 11 terms, not one or two, 11 terms. Until his death in 2001, he remained a member of parliament. Next comes former Prime Minister of India, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. He served 10 terms as an MP. For two of these terms, he was the Prime Minister of India. Vajpayee is tied on the second spot with former Lok Sabha Speaker Somnath Chatterjee of the left and late Union Minister PM Said of the Congress. They are followed by George Fernandes, the former Finance Minister of India. Former Lok Sabha Speaker P.A. Sangma, Congress's Madhav Rao Sindhya, Girdhar Gamang and Khagapati Pradhani. Each of them have served nine Lok Sabha terms. So has Kamal Nath. After nine terms as MP, he is not contesting this time. Next on the list is former Prime Minister Chandrasekhar and Deputy Prime Minister Jagjeevan Ram. They served eight terms each. So did the BJP's LK Advani and outgoing speaker Sumitra Mahajan. Both Advani and Mahajan are not contesting this time. Congress leader from Karnataka, K.H. Muniappa, has been an MP for seven terms. He's contesting again from Kolar in Karnataka. Trinamool Congress leader Mamata Banerjee, NCP leader Sharad Pawar have both served in parliament for seven terms. Both are not contesting in this election. Murli Manohar Joshi and Nitish Kumar have had six terms each. Again, not contesting. Menaka Gandhi and Virendra Kumar, the two sitting MPs of the BJP with six terms each, are back in the fray. Mulayam Singh Yadav of the Samajwadi Party, Anant Geete of the Shiv Sena with six terms each are also looking to add to their tally. They're all contesting this time. UPA chairperson Sonia Gandhi has been MP for five consecutive terms in the Lok Sabha and she's contesting again this time from Rai Bareli in Uttar Pradesh. So Indrajit Gupta's record will not be beaten this time, but these names and figures must force us to reflect on why the room for young blood in politics remains limited. There is no retirement age, there are no term limits and people remain MPs for decades. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Election Watch. Thanks very much for watching and keep your feedback coming. You can tweet us with the hashtag India Election Watch. We'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Keep watching beyond. World is one.